Hi, welcome to my talk. This is pumping up your productivity with Visual Studio all in .NET. So this talk is going to be a lot of demos, a lot of tips and tricks, um, cool stuff that we're going over with um, all kind of Roslyn things, refactorings, code fixes, tooling, source generators, razor editor, a lot of good stuff. A um, little bit about me. I'm Kendra Havens. I'm a program manager on .NET and Visual Studio. Um, that's my bio. Uh, I mainly focus on the testing experience in Visual Studio, and I do a lot of productivity with uh, Mika Dumont. So you might recognize us in some YouTube videos, some of our live streams, that kind of stuff. Um, outside of, oh, in an addition to an unruly enthusiasm for technology, uh, I love reading and camping. That's a little bit about me. Um, that is my Twitter handle, Got Heap. Um, Please reach out to me. I love especially geeking out about the testing experience or talking with people. It's it's strange, all of these virtual conferences. I really, really miss the interaction. So I can talk about hours about how to improve code quality and better testing practices and how we need to better educate um, people who are coming into the industry and um, all of that stuff. So I, I like talking about it. Um, Oh, and before I get into anything, I actually want to call out a lot of these features that I'm going to show today are community contributions. This is not just um, my team at Microsoft. It is a huge, huge community that we work within, and you can see a lot of that stuff or start participating in our repo on GitHub, uh, which is open source. So Roslyn is the Visual Basic and C Sharp compiler, and you can see it at aka.ms slash Roslyn. Um, so huge thank you to your contributors if uh, you're watching. Uh, this is a bit of our agenda. So first I'm going to go over source generators, uh, show a bunch of tooling tips. Some of the big ones are remove unused references. Yes, we've got it. We've got it in. It's in 16.10. Uh, so um, I'm using a 16.10 GA version of Visual Studio. So um, everything that I'm going to show is in our current release. You can get it. A lot of the things I'm going to show are under um, preview uh, feature flags. So there's some check boxes that you got to check to get them working. Um, but I'll, I'll call those out when we cover them. Um, inline hints is pretty cool. Inheritance margin. Uh, for navigating your inheritance chain uh, is in the default tools. More code fixes and refactorings, uh, editor config and code formatting for getting consistent code style across your team. And we have some new testing features as well. So let's get into that. Okay, demo time. Let's do it. First on my list, oh, I'll introduce this app a little bit. This is my Blazor memory game app and I'll go ahead and run it. So this is sort of your uh, basic uh, memory game. It's sort of a card matching game. So when you flip over a card, you try to find a matching pair, and if you don't find it, the cards flip back over. Um, so it's two player, it kind of keeps score, it tells you whose turn it is, it tells you um, how much time the um, game is going, and it's not super interesting right now. There's only two cards, so I want to build this out a little bit. Uh, so uh, one thing that is new that I want to show off really quick is um, extracting base class. So let's say I wanted to make, so I have a cat card right now, let's say I wanted to extract it, make sort of a generic animal card class. I can use um, control dot to open my screwdriver over here and uh, there we go, control dot to open my screwdriver over here, and I can extract the base class uh, with a new uh, refactoring that we offer, and that opens up a dialog. You can um, select all, deselect some, make some abstract, you could add it to a current file or a new one, and let's go ahead and name it name an animal card, make it a little bit more, um, uh, you know, generic, and uh, okay. So that's extracting base. And so I could um, re-implement this and kind of uh, make a dog card or a wolf card or anything like that. Or I could have source generators do it for me. So um, source generators is um, being able to kind of generate um, emitting C-sharp code during compilation and being able to add it back to the same compilation 
based on sort of data that you've analyzed. So if you're familiar with Roslyn analyzers, you can think of source generators as um, analyzers that emit C-sharp code, um, which is pretty cool. So let me show you what one of those look like that's over here in my cards generator class. So, you know, I actually have strings that contain sort of my base class that I want it um, to appear as, and I can um, generate multiple different things, throw different um, arguments in different cases, and uh, it's all going to be generated off of this emojis.txt file. So right now I only have um, sort of the emoji that I want to appear on the card and the name that I'm going to call it. Um, so uh, it kind of uh, analyzes that file. It's doing some, you know, uh, string readers. That's that's what our compiler does. It reads strings all day. That is code, and it can emit them. So let's go ahead and add a bunch of more emojis here. Let's do dog. Let's do horse. Um, let's do a wolf. Let's do penguin. Penguin. Yeah. And how about like a turtle? And I'm using the emoji text uh, editor in, um, let's see, Windows 10. And you can open that with Windows key dot to kind of get all of your emojis. So let's call that a dog. We got a horse. That is a wolf. And we got... Okay. Ah, so something I should be showing as I add these super quick is what is happening with source generators over in our Solution Explorer. So uh, is in my memory game model. Um, so as soon as I'm adding these to the file, it's actually generating um, the cards that I need that I kind of implement my animal card class and all of that. So. Um, let me go ahead and add one. So let's see, we're going to add turtle. So let's keep an eye on the Solution Explorer for turtle to appear. So I'm going to add the, oops, I spelled it wrong. Let's see. Again. Oh, yeah. There it is. Click on that and I'll go turtle. And now, keeping an eye on the existing C Sharp files here, and I haven't even saved this text file, we'll get a turtle card just automatically generated. So this is basically running a analyzer over changes, sensing them in my product, or in my um, in my product code, sorry, in my code, and generating uh, the source that I that it would be needed to make that work. So let's see that in action. So I'll go ahead and run my app, and we should see a bunch more cards. Nice! Turtles, wolves, penguins, excellent. Horses, cats, exactly what we want. <laughs> All right, so that is source generators. And if you want to learn more, we do have um, very in-depth um, uh, videos and documentation, and I can share some of those at the end. Cool. Um, so a couple just nice tooling things that I want to show off before we get in a little bit deeper into our um, productivity code fixes and refactorings. Uh, just general nice things to have. Um, I hope everyone has seen this. This is uh, vertical tabs. We do have the ability to pin your tabs to the left side, right side, um, all kinds of uh, different layouts. And um, these support, you know, um, tab groups and everything. So you can still organize tabs as you wanted them to be organized. Um, people love this in particular. This is like the number one ask um, uh, back when we introduced it because uh, screens are getting wider and wider and people have a lot of sort of this horizontal space that they want to um, take up. So usually they'll kind of be seeing their code and there's a ton of extra space over here and um, they want more uh, vertical space and they want to use that horizontal space. So people are pretty big fans of all of that. Um, 
I'm going to kind of reset mine since I'm using a lower resolution so it looks nice on my recording. Let's bump up my font once again. All right. Um, another thing that is uh, pretty newish, uh, just, you know, I'm kind of going over the really big things that happened in, in the last year or so, um, are the, is the Git window. So we now have Git kind of better integrated into Visual Studio. We completely did, redid um, sort of our Git changes window. So um, normally this would be in Team Explorer. I highly, highly recommend moving over to the Git changes window. It's kind of the same functionality. It's how you manage commits. Um, you can still, um, you know, switch switch branches, do remotes, push, pull, um, merge, fetch, all of that good stuff. Um, one thing that is awesome about this integration is uh, you can initialize a Git repository without hopping over to the command line. Um, so if you had an, if you were just kind of uh, file new project, you can, instead of, uh, you know, doing the, oh, I need a git ignore and forgetting to add the git ignore when you needed to in your repo and all of that, um, and get in it and all of that stuff, setting upstream, all of that, um, you can just, uh, like, create a git repository and it'll do a lot of that for you, which is really nice. It'll ask for, um, you know, what repository is upstream and that kind of thing. Uh, another really key part of the git integration is all of them are in control queue. So if I wanted to do something like git commit, um, I can do so and it'll pop my cursor over to the window and I can um, create a message. Uh, so commit message. So kind of you can be completely keyboard driven as well. Um, so it's pretty, pretty nice. Um, and you can do a lot of pretty great things. So if I wanted to, let's see, um, like get history or something like that, I can view my history. Um, pretty nice. Lots of stuff happening in, in this branch. You can see um, even uh, like incoming and outgoing. So it'll actually uh, also kind of um, take a look at what's happening on remotely, which is pretty cool. And let's see. Ah, the next one is the integrated terminal. Um, so control backtick is also the keyboard shortcut that accesses the terminal built into Visual Studio Code. So control backtick is the same one that we used in Visual Studio, kind of sharing some consistency there. Um, so this opens a PowerShell window, which is great. You don't have to use the NuGet package manager console PowerShell <laughs> window anymore. You can actually uh, kind of use the proper PowerShell window. And it comes with some cool stuff. You can switch it to command prompt and you can actually um, configure like different shell locations and exes that you want to use in your computer, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, cool. So yeah, always helpful for checking stuff, get status, you know, knowing where you are, all of that. Um, great. So that is, you know, integrated terminal. Ah, another one is um, opening the, or sorry, dragging and dropping in the solution explorer. And let me show you what I mean by that. So you can actually drag and drop from your file explorer in uh, Windows over to your solution explorer. So I can drag a new editor config file into my Blazor memory game model and have it appear, that, which is just ugh, so, so, so useful. It adds a reference, it includes it in my project. No need to kind of do the whole right click, add existing, browse to it, da, 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 da. Um, if it's in your file explorer, you can directly access it. So let's talk about one of the big ones that is removed unused references in the Solutions Explorer. So all I need to do is right click and remove unused references. And it'll show you this dialog of references that we don't detect any types in these are being used. And we can keep certain ones and remove others. And you just need to apply. It'll give you a bit of a warning. We can't undo it right now. Um, so we'll do yes, and it'll simply remove those references. So you'll see that I don't have that um, HTTP uh, reference anymore. Pretty cool. Uh, so that was one of the big ones that we're pretty excited about. So you might have noticed a new glyph that you might have seen in the side of my editor. Let's go to a place where I use those. So this is the inheritance margin that I was talking about. And um, I believe this is in um, tools options. So you do need to turn it on. And I'll tell you a little bit more. Let's see. Do we have this indexed? Nah. 
not yet. We'll, <laughs> we'll uh, look into that. So I think I can find it in C sharp. Oh, let's do, maybe it's in C sharp advanced. There we go. Show inherited smart gen. So it's experimental. So in order to get this left, you this glyph, you do have to turn it on. And this helps you navigate up and down the inheritance chain. Um, so here I can um, go to the animal card class that's implementing this. And I can go to, uh, yeah, just kind of navigate around, go back to cat card and all of that stuff. Um, so really easy to kind of up, navigate up and down your inheritance chain. It also works for um, overloaded methods and that kind of thing. So pretty handy just to kind of navigate around. Um, another big one is um, inline hints. So let's see, do I have any appearing yet? I don't. Okay. So this is also another one that you need to turn on in tools options. It's actually in the same place as inheritance margin. So just go to kind of C sharp advanced and inline hints also kind of experimental. So I can hit display these and you'll see a bunch of new values appearing in my editor. And uh, so th these show like type names and uh, parameter inline hits. So kind of what parameter, instead of kind of hovering over um, you, whatever you are calling in order to see what the parameter name is, it just appears in um, sort of right in the uh, source code for you. So you kind of know all of the um, inputs that you're putting into the method and how they're going to be used, which is a little bit easier to track. Um, but you might be thinking that is a lot of glyphs. Um, so you can also highly, highly customize what you see um, the, the hints for. So you can turn it off for literals, you can see them like only for new expressions or something. Or um, let's say I uncheck these. Um, you can also just select to see them only when you type F1. So you can kind of toggle them on. So actually it's Alt F1, excuse me. Um, and you can kind of press that keyboard shortcut, have them pop up um, so you can investigate a little bit further and have them uh, turn off again, which is really cool. Oh, one of my favorite places of, for doing this is actually inside of um, something like date time. So it can actually show you... Um, uh, hours, minutes, uh, seconds, and stuff that it gets into it, which is pretty awesome. Um, okay, because that's, you know, normally something I need to look up where I, I forget what order the parameter is in or something like that. Pretty cool. Um, yeah, so next I want to show off a handy little editor feature, um, which is Smart Break Line. So let's say that you're kind of typing a member in your class and you actually want it to be a property, you can use shift enter to automatically add braces where you want it to be. And if it doesn't detect that you have um, like an ending semicolon in it with the get and set stuff, if you press shift enter again, it'll say, oh, I know what you mean. You, you actually wanted a semicolon there. So it's kind of toggling um, back and forth the, the possibilities when you are um, creating this thing. Uh, so next we have more in IntelliSense. So we've added IntelliSense completion for preprocessor symbols. So if I was typing something like a hashtag if here and I press space and I hit control space again to open up my completion list, I now have completion options for the symbols that are currently in the defined scope. Um, one of our contributors saw this and took it a step further and then added IntelliSense for casts, indexers, and operators. So um, that kind of looks like if I had was typing out um, sort of a string and I did something that had an indexer on it and I auto-completed, so now it's appearing in the um, IntelliSense list. If I hit enter to kind of accept that, it actually inputs those square brackets into my um, editor and places my cursor where I want them to be, which is super, super nice to have. I like it a ton. Um, another one that we're super excited about, uh, let's say that I'm kind of, whoops, remaking this call and I'll just kind of type out um, list.binary search. Um, so I could hit tab to just accept this normally um, or if I hit tab tab, I can actually trigger IntelliSense argument completion. 
And that actually inputs a value for me that is already, you know, one of the possible overloads that I could choose. And I can kind of use my arrow keys to go through parameter info and it'll actually input all of these sort of like a snippet so you see how it's highlighted if i hit tab you know it goes to the next parameter it's super super useful so that's intellisense argument completion Uh, so another one that i want to talk about is also um, copy and pasting uh, and adding usings with copy and paste, which is super nice. So let's say I'm copying and pasting some regex code. In order for this to resolve, I obviously need the using system.txt regular expressions. So I did not copy that. I only copied um, the actual code line. So let's say I wanted to add this to one of my tests or something. Oh, so let's keep an eye on the top. See, I'm not using any um, uh, regex right now, and that using is going to be added. So I'll paste that in and boom, you can see it just appeared. So copying and pasting from one C-sharp file to another will just automatically figure out which uh, using statements that segment of uh, code actually needs. So that's using a directive automatically added on copy and paste. Pretty great. Um, so speaking of adding missing usings, we have also uh, have some new things in our Razor editor. So this is another one that is um, experimental, I believe. So we kind of have a we have a regular Razor editor, and we also have a Razor editor in preview. So you need to turn on the preview in order to um, get some of these features. And I believe we have this in environment preview features. Yeah, enable the experimental Razor editor. Okay, um, so let me show you what you can get with that. Um, so now if I delete a using that I actually do indeed need, I will now get the code fix to add the missing using inside of Razor. Super helpful, obviously. Use it all the time. That's like our number one most used um, refactoring, I believe. Uh, we also have um, a bunch of the navigation commands. So you can actually go to definition and navigate um, from uh, Razor files into others, which is pretty nice. And we also now support rename. So control RR, I can rename this to, you know, card two, whatever I need. Um, and that will support it and change all of the places that that card uh, is being used. So super nice. All right, um, here's another one of the big ones that we're pretty excited about. Um, we can now uh, display, well, let's talk about editor config for a second. Editor config, if you aren't using it yet, it's super, super useful. It uh, contains all of your code style and formatting for your product, and it lives in your source here over here in the Solution Explorer. Um, so it travels along with the rest of your repo. It's tracked in source control, all of that good stuff. We now, if I double click on it, have a UI for it. Um, so traditionally, if you were opening this in Visual Studio, you might have seen the text file, and I can still get there using F7. So that might be what you're used to seeing. Um, which was kind of hard to edit. It's hard to figure out um, what options every single thing actually occurs. People were kind of, you know, going back and forth between documentation and um, what they wanted or an example and what they wanted. Now you can kind of just, it's just a drop down of all of the values that um, are actually accepted for, to the, for that thing. So that's super, super helpful. Um, you know, check, check boxes instead of actually editing true, false and everything. Uh, even though it'll still appear kind of the same way in your source control when you do make any changes. Um, so a couple other things that are really helpful about this are the different categories that we have for formatting, analyzers, and code style. And really big one is search. So you can now search for, um, like, let's say all of your XUnit analyzers, and it kind of... Uh, you know, filters down the list to what you want. Another one that's really cool to search is for code analysis analyzers. So that's just CA abbreviation. And those contain a ton of the most popular FX COP rules that helped um, improve your code quality. So a lot of those are brought forward into our code analysis um, uh, NuGet package, and you can get those on your uh, project and um, more and more of these will also be adding up um, in order to 
uh, view your .NET SDK analyzers. So .NET 5 shipped with a ton of new analyzers that help you get uh, uh, advice on coding best practices from the SDKs themselves, which is pretty uh, cool. So every single new version of the SDK is coming with more analyzers that help you use the things in that SDK, which is pretty cool. It's not, you know, separate now. It's all kind of shipping within the SDK. So there's tons and tons of new stuff um, that's going to help you catch things a lot earlier. And let's see, one of the uh, big things with editor config is still um, you might be getting uh, you know help across your editor to do things like removing extra blank lines. And that might be kind of loud. You can change the severity. So right now I'm getting a suggestion. Maybe my repo you know is really, really hates extra blank lines. I can move that up to a warning. It um, then triggers, you know, that green squiggle instead of those dots that I was getting um, in my editor. And you might have noticed in my menu that uh, when I was changing the severity, it showed that the there's actually going to be a code change, and this exists in the editor config. So all of that is still tracked um, within the editor config. We just now have a UI over it, which is pretty nice. And you can still access, you know, the text file and all of that. Oh, and I want to call out a couple of new new, new refactorings, and um, also you can apply your editor config with uh, Control KD. That's .NET Format. You can also apply .NET Format with the .NET Format Global Tool, which is a NuGet package that you can install. And uh, another option for that is applying it with um, code cleanup. So you can run code cleanup um, with this little broom icon. Code cleanup is also control KE that applies to the document that's open. And you can also run code cleanup over your entire solution. So um, you weren't able to do that before outside of the command line, I believe. Um, and you can configure what, uh, prep, what fixers you actually want to run as part of code cleanup. So you might not want to run absolutely everything if you're using it, you know, really, really commonly. If you're using it, you know, every minute or so <laughs> um, that you're writing code just to clean up your formatting. So um, you can kind of use multiple levels of customization there as well. All right. What are a couple new ones? So there's a couple... Uh, really nice just refactorings that I sprinkled throughout here. You can wrap on, um, you know, binary um, expressions, which is a little nice. New, new wrapping things. You can also wrap on um, uh, method calls. So you can wrap a kind of long call chain, make it a little bit easier to view. There's multiple wrapping um, options. I like to kind of wrap in a line. There we go. So it kind of looks all in, in one order. Uh, yeah, so this is another one that is just, ah, uh, I've shown it a few times, so sorry if uh, you're seeing it before, but we we do have the ability to simplify expressions. So um, you might have been coding a while, lots of things changed, maybe adding and taking away variables. If you lost the thread of it and you kind of didn't realize there's a much simpler way to um, write something, that's okay. The, the compiler can actually detect those um, code segments for you and give you, ah, the simplified conditional expression, which is super helpful. And uh, ah, another thing that uses the editor config is the file header. So uh, if I deleted this, I would be getting a little light bulb here um, anywhere at the top of my file to add the file header that I have specified in my editor config. And you can completely customize um, the comment here um, and it's super helpful that you can also um, include it in code cleanup. Um, so you can make sure that that is actually running across uh, your entire solution and all of your files um, do indeed have your, you know, copyright text or, or whatever you need to have there. All right, so I want to show you a few things that we've um, updated with the edit and continue experience. So let me dive into one of my tests so we can show that. Uh, great. So let me go ahead and uh, start debugging this test. So edit and continue is sort of the state that you get in while you are debugging and you can make some code changes. You can um, rewrite, re uh, 
run the debugger over certain lines of code and kind of drag and drop and, and re-execute. And it usually kind of works with, with some of your changes. And we're making that even better. Um, you might have heard a bit of like the hot reload experience. We're definitely trying to um, get you uh, d debugging and, and looking and seeing seeing the changes that your code has made um, a lot faster. So, so, so this is one of my tests. I'm uh, kind of going through a playthrough of the memory game. I'm outputting some console.write lines when it's a different player's turn. And let's say I have a string that says, oh, um, this, this player won with a certain number of matches. So what I want to do is actually make that into all caps. Um, and I want to do that using the humanizer uh, NuGet package, which I don't actually have um, installed. So uh, I'll go ahead and use my, um, you know, light bulb to go ahead and find and install that. And it'll actually resolve. And this is while I'm debugging, which is great. So I can uh, kind of scroll up there and see that it added humanizer. And I can go ahead and continue this test, and I will be in all caps. And uh, we can see the output of tests now with console.writeline in uh, the test explorer. So uh, we did a lot to make um, truncation of logs a lot better. Ah, let me rerun this. It was actually having a little bit of problems with the output when I was pausing it in there. Um, oh, another thing that Edit and Continue can um, do is any editing of records or partial types can also handle. So Edit and Continue, adding and changing namespace usings, changing records and partial types, uh, you can actually continue with your debugger session while doing those. And I'll go ahead. So uh, back back to the test explorer, we added a few new things here. So we're now showing standard output and standard error in the test explorer, just making that a lot easier to access. We can preserve clickable links. We are preserving um, like different regions, so it's actually really easy to navigate. And we're truncating up to a certain point. So we're handling truncation much, much better now. Um, if you're producing a huge, huge amount of output or output with multiple files, it will now, it's much less likely to freeze. So we actually have logic around handling a lot of that. We won't um, take over the UI thread or anything. Yeah, we, we now show standard output. So this is now in all caps, very exciting. Adds a little excitement to um, who won the match. And a uh, few other things that I want to show with the test explorer. Um, so this is pretty cool. This is actually, um, we've added code coverage cross-platform. Um, so I actually need to demo this um, in the Windows terminal using an instance of Ubuntu. So right now I'm on Ubuntu 20.04. We have uh, support for cross-platform code coverage. Uh, for Ubuntu as well as Alpine. And you're actually going to use your regular um, commands for this. So just .NET collect code coverage, just as you kind of would on a Windows machine, but you can do the same on Linux. This is really helpful for uh, developers who want code coverage from their CI machines and they want to kind of compare. And we will generate sort of the same um, dot .coverage files, which you can still open in Visual Studio to kind of view the, um, let's see, this is what I generated today, to kind of view the dot coverage there, view the highlighting um, of what lines are covered by code and what aren't, but it's all actually originating from a Linux run, which is pretty sweet. Um, okay, so that's cross-platform code coverage on Linux. And just a sort of public service announcement there as well. So fakes, now supports .NET Core, so that happened in and .NET 5 and .NET 6 and all of that, the new version of .NET. So that happened in, I think, uh, Visual Studio 16.5, 16.6 timeframe. It also now includes uh, fakes as part of code coverage reports as well. So we kind of, you know, completed the circle there. Uh, so that's just kind of an announcement I, I always like to bring up in case people haven't heard. Um, and they've been wanting to move some of their... Um, fakes uh, .NET code over to .NET Core, but they still wanted to, you know, preserve all of the tests that they had. All right, so I have uh, one last thing to show off. Uh, this is playing a, 
or test audio cues. So this can play a sound when the test run finishes. So this is a check that you can make in the settings window of the test explorer. And I'll go ahead and run one really quick. So you might have heard that little ding. We're keeping it um, pretty low and subtle, and I actually don't think I have any failing tests. Let me go ahead and make this fail really quick. Uh, let's go with an is true. We'll do false, and we'll also run this. So you can hear two different sounds. So that was a da da da. <laughs> Uh, and you can completely customize these sounds. You just go to Tools, Options, Test, and this little Configure Sounds will pop up the Windows 10 sound dialog. So you can obviously have a lot of fun with this and <laughs> create any kind of sounds that you want to signal the end of a test. This is super helpful for anyone who is... Um, you know, trying to multitask or kicking off really long runs and just need a little bit of an indicator to go back um, and, and realize that that process has finished. Um, it started as an accessibility feature, but obviously good for anyone who is multitasking. Um, so let me go ahead and customize the sound here. I want to have a little fun with this. Okay, let's go ahead and rerun a passing test. There we go. That's my applause. That's how we get applause at the end of <laughs> talks nowadays when it's all happening virtually. Uh, so let's go back to my resources. Yeah, so um, you can check out our blogs. We talk a lot about... Um, you know, all, all of the things that I've mentioned, uh, we usually talk about them before when they're still kind of experimental in preview. We're always really excited to share during the development process. We can get feedback as soon as we possibly can. Um, another part of that is thank you to everyone who is using the preview versions of Visual Studio. We get a ton of amazing feedback um, to make the GA releases much more, you know, stable and make sure they work and the thousands, tens of thousands of scenarios that you all use on your computers that, you know, we, we have no way of reproducing in many cases. Um, so thank you for all of the people who are kind of on the edge there checking out Visual Studio Preview. Um, you can check out regular live streams, videos, and just lots of fun stuff on live dot 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 net. Live dot 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 net. Live dot 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 net. <laughs> Um, we often, uh, we do live streams every single week from .NET. Uh, Mads Christensen is doing sort of an extension building Fridays. He has a um, Visual Studio, Ask Visual Studio team kind of QA office hours um, kind of streams. Jeff Fritz is always doing um, code along kind of uh, building, building apps right in front of you for hours at a time. <laughs> Um, so you can always check those out. We've also gone very depth into source generators in some of our interviews. So if you want to see multiple hours of those, those are some of our most watched videos. Um, so you can check those out at aka.ms slash source generators. Um, those, that will also link, I think, to the docs um, on some of it. Um, I mentioned some of the .NET 5 um, kind of SDK analyzers. I really want to stress how great a leap in .NET performance that you're getting with .NET 5 or .NET 6 when you upgrade. We have a blog post about it. It is um, probably my favorite blog post of the entire year because we've literally improved things in performance like char array handling and two upper handling and that kind of um, small improvement, nanosecond improvement, obviously multiplies millions of times uh, because we do lots of that all across code, all across browsers and web development and servers and all of that. So anyway, I'm geeking out about it. <laughs> um, another really big deal that we announced um, at Build, I believe, yeah, Build, um, Visual Studio 2022 is going to be 64-bit. Um, lots, lots of people have asked for this. They want uh, much more memory available um, in their Visual Studio. So that is, we have a whole blog about it. If you want to learn a little bit more, wanted to include kind of the big, the big exciting stuff. Um, and that is, that's all. Um, thank you so much for joining. Um, yeah, please, please reach out to me on Twitter. That's got heap again. Um, if you have any questions, thanks for having me.